Hi friends, welcome to GMAT Points video series. I'm Saili Kale. In this video, we'll be basically covering the basics of graphics interpretation. That is, what are charts, how to read charts, how to read graphs, what are the different elements of a chart. So, we'll be covering all of that in this particular video. We'll also be answering some basic questions on charts. What type of questions are asked? So, like percentage change, absolute change. We'll be covering those very fundamental concepts in this particular video. So, let's get started. Let's first look at a chart. How does a chart actually, uh, what it looks like? So let us take a look at an example chart. So in front of us is an example chart which shows us the weight distribution in class 12 weight. Let's take a look at each element of the chart and understand each of these elements as such. We'll start with the first thing which is chart type. So what is chart type? See basically there are different types of charts. There are line charts, bar charts, pie charts, scatter plots. So we have to first identify what type of chart this is. For example, in this given uh, chart, this is a frequency distribution. The, here we are given the frequency at which uh, a particular weight occurs. On the right axis, we are given the number of students which have a particular weight. So for example, over here, one student has the weight of 74 kgs. Two students or how many students? Four students have the weight of 73 kgs and so on. So basically here we are given the weight or the weight distribution of students in the particular class and we are given a frequency uh, distribution diagram over here. So this is the chart type. It can be easier charts are there which are like uh, charts of the form line chart, bar chart, they are also there. So the first thing that you should understand is what is this chart type. You have to familiarize yourself with all the different chart types that are there and don't worry we will be covering all the uh, chart types in our uh, video course. So, we will be covering every single chart type that is asked in the GMAT exam. The second thing that you should look at is the chart title. Over here, what does the chart title tell you? The chart titles tell you the weight distribution in class 12a. So, over here you have the uh, distribution of the uh, weights by number of people in the class 12a. So, these are students. So, what is their weights is given in this particular frequency distribution diagram. So, we are told that what is the weight and how many students are at that particular weight. Okay. So, this is this chart title generally is the uh, clue to understanding a particular chart. A good chart title will help you easily understand what is actually given in a chart. A bad chart title might leave you confused as such. So, a good chart title is very, very important to understanding a chart. The first thing that you should always do whenever you look at a chart is to read the chart title and try to understand what is being depicted in the data. Oh, the weight distribution is being depicted. The different weights of students by uh, like frequency are given in the particular chart as such. So, now I understand what the chart is doing. Okay. The second thing that you should look at is the chart subtitle. Our chart subtitle contains a very important clue. What is the clue? We are told that there are 75 students and the male to female ratio is 8 is to 7. So, let us say there are 8x male students and 7x female students together that is 15x. 15x is equal to 75. So, x has to be equal to 5. So, that means there are 40 male students and 35 female students. So, a big clue is given what is the distribution of male to female. We can infer from the subtitle. So, you should read each part of the chart, the chart title and the subtitle very, very carefully because important clues can be hidden in these areas. Okay, so this is a chart subtitle which gives you additional information about the chart. Now, let us take a look at the legend. This is one of the basic things that are required to actually read a chart because sometimes like in this particular chart, you will be given multiple uh, charts. Here you have one bar chart on which a line chart is overlaid. See, if you have only one line chart, you do not need a legend. You know exactly that whatever is the line given is the chart. This is the like say if this is say uh, uh, height and this is say age. You know that this particular line is for the height uh, with respect to age. There are no multiple uh, distributions as such. Since there are no multiple distributions, there are no multiple charts. You do not need to identify which uh, color refers to what as such. Because you know exactly which color refers to what because there is only one chart as such. But here as uh, in the case of this example that we have in front of us, there are two uh, charts as such. There is a bar chart and on top of that a histogram is laid. So we need to identify which color what refers to what. So, the blue color is basically the bar chart. It indicates the number of students. The number of students are given here in this right axis title. The red is the distribution which is given over here, which is in the left axis title. So, basically we will be able to understand whether it is the number of students, whether it is the distribution by looking at the legend. The legend says that the bar should be left red by the right axis. The legend tells you that the red line, the distribution should be read by the right, uh, left axis. So, by using the legend, you will first be able to identify, okay, 
this chart should be read, uh, read with this. This chart refers to this series. This chart is of this color. So, whenever there are multiple charts, it tries to remove the confusion of, okay, what does this chart refer to? What is its axis? What does this uh, mean? So, by using this color combination, you can easily say, okay, red color means distribution, blue color means uh, number of students. Particularly, if there are multiple bar charts, for example, if you have, like, say, bar for each year, okay, one bar from 2021 to 2022. So, say, suppose you have a, uh, like, group bar chart like this, for one bar represents each year. So, you can say that, okay, all yellow bars are 2020, all green bars are 2021, all red bars are 2022. So, by giving that legend, you can then identify, okay, this bar has to be 2022, this bar has to be 2022, this bar has to be 2022. So, that color dis differentiation, that legend will help you identify what are the relevant data points, what are the relevant series for the uh, chart that you want to read. So, it is the next most important thing that you need to read when you are reading a chart. Now, let us take a look at the grid lines. So, what are the grid lines? So, if you see these grid lines are over here. So, generally the grid lines are given for the left axis as such. Here, if you see our right axis is kind of out of scale. It is falling in the middle of the left and right distribution. So, the grid lines that are there are given for the left axis. So, you have a major grid line which is for 2%, 4%, 6%, 8%, 10%, 12% 10 and then you have the minor grid lines that are between the major grid lines. So, this one is for 11%, this one is for 9%, this one is for 7% and so on. The grid lines help you identify the values. So, for example, over here for this distribution, what is the peak of this distribution? Can you figure that out? So, I will put that over here. I will draw this value over here as such. And I can say that this is somewhere between 10 and 11. So, this peak of the uh, distribution is around 10.5% as such. So, I can read that because of the grid lines. The grid lines help me decide how is how much is the difference between the values, how far are they from the grid lines. That helps me determine how, what its value will be. So, since this point is midway between these two grid lines, I can say that the peak value of the red uh, distribution should be around midway between those two. So, it should be midway between 10 and 11 percent. So, it should be around 10.5 percent. So, grid lines are there only to help you read the y axis values and to read the bar chart or chart values as such. Now, consider what is reference line. See, reference lines is basically a line which is drawn either a vertical line or a horizontal line which tells you of a threshold. So, for example, in this case, a vertical line is drawn which tells you what is the mean of this distribution. So, the mean tells you that, okay, above this particular value, all of these bars, all of these students are above the mean value of weight. All of these bars are below the mean value of weight. This tells you that the mean is over here and all students above that are above average. All students below that are below average. So, this is basically what is being depicted by the uh, mean threshold as such. In some charts, you can have a horizontal threshold. So, for example, consider a chart where the revenue is given of a company. So, then you can get a horizontal threshold saying that this is the break-even point. So, any value which is below the break-even point, you can say that, okay, I am making a loss in this case. In this case, I am in the red. Any value above the break-even point, I can say that I am making a profit. So, this horizontal threshold also tells me what is the reference point above which I am making a profit, below which I am actually making a loss. So, uh, a reference line is either a horizontal line or a vertical line which basically helps you read the graph, which helps you tell, okay, which is a, uh, uh, which uh, points are good, which points are bad. For example, in some cases, you can have a line which is of a, at six, 45 degrees. Anything above the 45 degree line may be acceptable drugs basically which are safer and effective. Anything below that line might be unacceptable in terms of their risk reward payoff or something of that sort. So, basically these reference lines help you easily demarcate different points on the graph. So, this is the role of the reference line. Now, consider the left axis title. Here we are given that this is distribution and the right axis title tells you that this is the number of students. So, why is that given? Basically, this tells you that this left axis repre represents the uh, red color line distribution. The right axis refers to the number of students. So, if you are actually trying to read the number of students, should you take a look at the left axis or the right axis? You should go for the right axis because the number of students is on the right axis. So, if I want to find out how many uh, students have uh, 73 kilo weight as such. So, I will say if I see 73 kilo weight, this height is over here. This is 4 students have 73 kilo weight. So, to identify which axis should I actually look at, 
I need to see the access titles, match them with the legend and whenever I am reading a particular series, either bar chart or line chart, I should use the right access title to read and uh, see the value. So, the access title tells you which axis refers to which particular chart. Okay, So, that is the left, left axis title and right axis title. It also helps you read that Okay, this distribution is on the vertical axis, this uh, number of students is on the vertical axis, the weight is on the horizontal x axis. So, the weight this 55, 56, 57 what is it? It is weight in kilograms. So, the horizontal axis title tells you what is there on the x axis as such. These two tell you what is there on the first y axis and the second y axis as such. Now, over here if you will notice the our x axis does not start from 0. Do we need uh, the x axis to always start from 0? See in certain cases uh, x uh, axis need not start from 0 because if you consider would a student's weight really be 0? No. So, if you actually started from 0, 1, 2, 3, there would be a large blank space on the left and then suddenly you would have a graph. So, instead of doing all of that, what you do is you have your x axis start from a reasonable value. In this case, it starts from 55 which is basically I think the, uh, there are 0 students there but basically a reasonable value for fitting your distribution as such. So, anything, uh, in many of these cases, starting from 0 is really not needed. So, you have to also be careful where your x axis starts from. In many cases, it might not start from 0 at all. It might start from a minimum value beyond below which we do not really encounter the values of the uh, series that we are actually studying. Now, let us take a look at the units of measurement. See, what is the unit of measurement of the x axis? It is kilograms. What is the unit of measurement of the second y axis? It is number of people. What is the unit of measurement of the first y axis? It is 0.0 to 0 0.04. So, it is basically in percent. It is the distribution. So, percentage of students is given in the first y axis. You have to be very careful of the unit of measurement whenever you are calculating. Uh, you should not like mix grams with kilograms or kilometers with meter. It is important that you see these particular measures because at times sometimes you have uh, uh, like thousands are given or something like that. Revenue in thousands is given in the access title. So, you should always very carefully read the access titles because at times since uh, revenue or thousands is given as such or something some uh, unit is measured uh, mentioned in the access title or in the chart title. If you do not multiply it by 1000, you will get the wrong answer. So, sometimes the units of measurements have to be carefully looked at in the chart title, in the axis title, in every place so that you do not miss key points about the values that are being depicted. Okay. The last thing that we will see is that what is the scale of the uh, first y axis and the second y axis. If you see, the first y axis is increasing by 2 percent, the second y axis is increasing by 1 percent as such. So, here also you have to be careful of what is the tick how many uh, like sometimes it, uh, you can have a y axis where you have given 5, 10, 15, 20. So, when you are reading the value you should know what each tick represents. So, if I draw out and I say ok it is over here even though these are only 2 grid lines or 2 major grid lines because it is coming the tick value is 2 percent it is actually 4 percent. So, you should know exactly the scale is before you actually measure how much it is uh, how much each tick represents. So, these are the important parts of the chart. Now that you know the different parts of the chart, let us actually take a look at the concepts or the questions that are asked from the charts. The most important type of concept that is often asked is that given a chart, you are asked what is the change in values as such. So, suppose this is the values or a bar chart. So, say this is Jan, Feb, March and April and say these values are say 67, 74, 83 and say 84. These are the values that are depicted on the chart as such. Now, you might be asked that what is the change observed from Jan to April? So, when you are asked for change, this refers to absolute change. Absolute change means that you have to just take the final value minus the initial value. So, in this case, what do you have to say? You have to say that the final value is 84 minus 67, this change is 17 points as such. You are not considering what is the percentage increase or the uh, or like divided by 67, how much is the in percentage terms, how much it is increasing or decreasing. Here, this is basically just absolute change. So, when you are reading the question, ask yourself immediately, are they asking for change or are they asking for percent change? If the word percent is not there, do not start automatically calculating percentage when percentage is not asked. This is one of the common errors made by many students where they assume all changes are asked in percentage terms. Sometimes absolute change is asked, 
sometimes percentage changes us unless you see the word percentage in the question you are referring to it's always being referred to as uh, absolute change now let us consider if percentage change is asked what should you do percentage change is basically absolute change divided by the initial value into 100 percent so percentage change in the same case okay percent change this would be final value minus initial value upon initial value into 100 percent whenever you have a series of like this always percentage change has uh, you have to divide by uh, percentage value when you are asked how much is april less than or more than january whatever part comes after than is basically the uh, value that has to go in the denominator so in this particular case how much is april more than january that would be 84 minus 67 by 67 into 100 percent so that would be 17 by 67 into 100 percent so you can calculate that but that is basically the percentage change if you are not given you are just asked for how much is the percentage increase you should always take the initially or chronologically initial value in the denominator so here january comes before april so the percentage increase or decrease will always be with respect to january but on the other hand if you are asked how much is january less than april if you are asked jan how much is jan less than april then you have to actually take april in the denominator so it will be 17 divided by 84 and not 67 because whatever comes after than that has to be in the denominator so whenever you are calculating percentage change you have to basically say final value minus initial value divided by initial value if there is a chronological order if there is explicit chronological order where you are saying just percentage increase or decrease then you have clear idea that okay april comes after jan so jan has to be in the denominator but in a sentence given like this where we are asked how much is jan less than or more than april you have to say which word or which month comes after the word than in this case april comes after than in the word than is the comparator it is the denominator it indicates which month has to be in the denominator so april has to be in the denominator in such cases this has to be very very carefully followed when you are reading percentage change questions you have to first ask yourself uh, have they given just percentage increase decrease follow the chronological order have they given x greater than or x less than then which is the term which comes after that then you have to put that in the denominator okay this is when it comes to percentage change and absolute change most of the questions in the uh, graphs are related to percent change and absolute change as such some other questions that are there in graphs based questions are related to descriptive statistics so i'll basically dis uh, describe or uh, discuss that the most uh, types of descriptive statistics questions that are asked are on range mean median and mode these are basically the most commonly asked questions when it comes to descriptive statistics when it comes to graphs so basically any graph that is given a bar chart is given a light chart is given any of these kind of charts is given what will they they can ask is what is the mean of these values what is the median of these values they might not ask you mean of all values or median of all values they can ask you the mean of the first 10 values the first uh, quarter of values the first one fourth values of the set uh, the first uh, quartile the last quartile they can ask you the mean of that or the median of that so suppose there are say 10 points as such this is 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so if they ask you the mean of the first half or the bottom half then you have to basically calculate what is the mean of these five values if they are asking you for the median of the top half or the later half then you have to calculate the median of these five values as such so basically mean and median either they can ask you for of the entire set or they can ask you for a part of the set as such so you have to identify this part of the set is being asked i have to take the mean of these values by the way how, is, how do you calculate mean of the values mean is nothing other than arithmetic average so i calculate add up the values as such if this is like say uh, 77 81 83 8 whatever the values i add all of them up once I add all of them up, I have to divide it by the number of points that I am considering. Since I am considering 5 points over here, I have to take the sum of the values divided by 5 for me to get the mean. When it comes to median, it is even simpler. Basically, I have to arrange the values that are over here. Suppose to uh, uh, find the median of these 5 values. Arrange these 5 values in a ascending order. 
whatever is the value in the ascending order that is the whatever is the middle value in the ascending order that is the correct answer. In this case you can see that this is like the top value these two are probably near the bottom values. So you have to essentially see which value is somewhere near the middle. Uh, trying to guess like this might not be the best idea. First like just write down the values. So A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5 are the 5 values represented over here. Then order them in increasing order. Say A2 is the lowest value, A1 is the next lowest value, A4 is the third lowest value, A3 is the uh, fourth lowest value and A5 is the highest value for example. If this is the case which will be the median, when you order it like this, the middle term will be the median as such. Suppose you have an even number of terms, suppose there is A6 also, then the average of the middle two terms would be the median. So here you would say that the median will be equal to A3 plus A4 divided by 2. So whenever you are asked mean or median, uh, mean just take the arithmetic average, simple average of the numbers, median write down the numbers, order them in ascending order, the middle term or the average of the middle two terms will give you the median as such. This is about mean and median. What is mode? Mode is basically the entry which comes the most number of times. So if you are given a uh, line chart like this, if suppose one observation is seen two or three times, so for example, this is say uh, a uh, temperature of say rainfall in mm, okay, and uh, say, uh, 10 uh, centimeters is seen 3, 4, 5 times a year. So whatever observation is seen the most times, which is the most frequent or common observation, that is the mode of the set. So in this case, if 10 mm of rainfall is seen throughout the year most number of times, then it will become the mode of the set. So this is basically mode, whatever observation comes the most number of times is the mode of the set. In the previous example, for example, what would be the mode? If you see 64 kgs comes how many times? It comes 7 times and 70 kgs comes 8 times. So which observation comes the most number of times? When it comes to weights, 70 kgs comes most number of times because 8 people have 70 kgs. That is the most frequently observed weight as such. So for this particular set, what would be the mode of this set? The mode of this set would be 70 kgs. So that is basically whatever is the chart, uh, if it is a bar chart, the uh, bar which has the highest height is the mode of the chart as such. Otherwise, when you if you have a line chart or something like that, you have to basically see which observation comes most number of times. That is the mode of the set. The next is range of the set. The range of the set is basically the highest minus lowest value. So, suppose you have the lowest value over here, the highest value over here. This vertical height between the highest value and the lowest value is the range of the chart. It tells you the vertical spread of the chart as such. In case of the previous example, what is the range of this particular example? In this particular case, the highest weight was 74, okay. What was the lowest weight? There is 0 people at 59, there is uh, there are 3 people at 60. So there is nobody below 60, 60 is the lowest weight, 74 is the highest weight. So what is the range of weights observed in the class? 74 minus 60, 14 kilos. So range is basically range is basically highest value minus lowest value will give you the range of the observation. If you have a line chart that is the top value minus the bottom value, the vertical distance between them is the range. So essentially just remember range is highest value minus lowest value, mode is the most frequently, frequently observed value, mean is the arithmetic mean or arithmetic average, median is the middle value. When you order the set uh, according to increasing order, the middle value or the arithmetic mean of the middle two values will give you the median. So one of the other things that can be asked when you are given information in a graph form instead of like mean, median, range and mode, you can be asked for quartiles or quintiles. So what is quartiles? See median is basically you are finding the midway mark, the 50th percentile mark as such. Quartile is basically 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 75th percentile and 100 percentile. So you are essentially splitting the data set into four parts. So suppose your data set is something like this, you have say marks from 1 to 100, okay. This is the first lowest mark, 100 is say the highest mark as such. So which would be the median mark, 50 and 51 would be the two middle marks, their average would be the median. If I say quartile, first quartile, first quartile would be the 1 to 25 marks, second quartile would be 26 to 50, third quartile would be 51 to 75 marks and uh, fourth quartile would be 76 to 100 marks. So there are basically four quartiles which are basically 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 75th percentile and 100 percentile. These are the four quartiles as such. Median is the exact middle mark 
if there are two values in the middle it is the average of those two uh, marks as such now consider what is quintile quintile is basically one fifth quartile is one fourth quintile is one fifth so in that case it will be 1 to 20 would be the first quintile 21 to 40 will be the second quintile and so on these basically can be asked in uh, terms of graphs whenever you are given information you will just have to sort it from lowest to highest lowest quartile or first quartile would be the first 25 percent of responses middle quartile or the second quartile would be from 26 to 58 percent of uh, uh, like uh, responses 51 to 75 will be the third quartile and the last quartile or the final quartile would be 76 to 100 percent like okay these are basically the information that would be asked you might also be asked questions on trends or correlation so we'll be taking a look at that separately where we'll discuss okay this is the scatter plot this is a trend this is a correlation and there might also be qualitative graphs or qualitative diagrams given so we'll consider all of these graphs separately but essentially in this particular video we'll tell you that this is the type of question that will be asked percentage change how much is the percentage change how much is the absolute change what is the median value what is the mean value what is the range what is the quintile value this particular average of the first quartile these are generally the kind of questions that actually come in graphs uh, graphics interpretation and these are the questions that you should be able to answer for answering these questions you need basically an ability to read the graph and solve basic arithmetic operations that's all that is needed now let us take a look at a simple question that comes from this particular topic so this is how the question will look like you will be given a description at the top that is the following graph represents the control chamber conditions during an experiment mapping fun fungal growth through meticulous monitoring daily temperature and humidity measurements were recorded over a 20 day period so that fungal temperature water fungal growth etc is separate but what does the chart essentially show it shows the temperature and humidity over a 20 day period so x axis is the number of days this is the uh, x axis this is the x horizontal x axis title so each number of days the value has been recorded so on the first day what is the value of humidity and what is the value of temperature temperature is on this particular y axis humidity is on this particular y axis so when we are measuring on uh, the temperature we have to look at the values on the left axis when we are measuring humidity we have to see the values on the right axis luckily for us they have given the values also otherwise you would have to actually guess the values looking at how far up they are on this particular chart so over here consider in the case of humidity is actually not given so we will have to actually measure those values for temperature it is given as such humidity is given temperature is not given to see temperature we will have to actually measure them along the axis so consider over here what is the temperature value on day one this is the element that we have to see if we see it is on the grid line for 20 degrees so on the first day what is the temperature it is 20 degrees on the next day it goes up to 22 degrees the point is over here on the third day it falls to 19 degrees and so on so basically the blue graph which is basically the triangles uh, joined by the line they represent temperature as such one of the things that you should also remember is that in the uh, legend the legend will show you the color as well as the marker so in this case the marker for the line uh, which shows the temperature is this blue triangle for what is the marker for humidity it is a red rectangle as such so generally when you are given the legends the marker is also given which helps you identify the color is a more evident more obvious distinction but sometimes it is difficult to distinguish between say uh, orange color and pink color then you can distinguish by the marker shape also you can say that okay i'm looking at the trend line which has the triangular markers sometimes you can have different shades of black itself which are only distinguished by the marker so you can then recognize which is the humidity value which is the temperature value based on the marker shape as such so you should look at not just the color but also the marker shape as such okay so this is fungal growth observation conditions over 20 day period that is a chart title the x axis i understand the y axis both y axis i understand the legend i understand this is the series that is given in the case of humidity they have been helpful to us and they have given actual values for temperature we have to read the values by using the grid lines okay this much i can understand from the graph itself so the first description is given the graph is given now below the chart we are given questions we have to answer the questions so what is the format of the questions so you have to use the drop down menus to fill in the blanks in each of the following statements based on the information given in the graph so you'll be given a drop down with options like this and you have to select the right option such that this statement becomes true the statement is the mean temperature during the initial five days is dash to the mean temperature observed in the final five days so you have to find the mean temperature in the initial five days you have to say find the median temperature observed in the final five days 
then you have to compare them is the mean temperature less than is it greater than is it equal to so based on that you have to select the right value such that the statement becomes a true statement that is basically what you have to do in graph uh, graphical interpretation you have to choose the right value from the drop down menu consider the second statement between day 7 and day date there is a notable increase of dash in temperature alongside a corresponding decrease of dash percentage points in humidity. So again over here we have to calculate the value, select the right value from the drop down menu. It is like fill in the blanks. You have to find out the right value, fill in the blank with the right value. And how do you fill in the blank? You choose that particular ele element from the drop down menu. So let us try to solve this question. So let us take a deeper look at this question. The question first question is mean temperature during the initial 5 days is what to the median temperature observed in the final 5 days. In the initial 5 days, what is the temperature observed? So, the first mean temperature in the first 5 days is 20. This is 20. Second temperature is 22. Third temperature is 19. Fourth temperature is 21. Fifth temperature is 23. What is the mean of these values? All of these values are somewhere around 20. So, let us say the assumed mean is 20. Okay. So, if 20 is the assumed mean, what is the difference from 20? Plus 2 minus 1. So, that is plus 1 plus 1 that is plus 2 plus 3 so that is plus 5. So, the difference is 5 and divided by number of entries which is 5. So, the actual mean is actually 21 degrees C. You can also calculate the actual mean by adding up all the values and when you add up all the values you will see that the uh, total sum will be 105 degrees divided by 5 will be 21 degrees. So, basically the mean of the first 5 temperature readings is how much? It is 21 degrees C. What is the median temperature observed in the final 5 days? So, the median temperature observed in the final 5 days, let us see the final 5 days, this is 19 degrees, last day is 19 degrees, this is, if I see, if I trace it down like this, it is 22 degrees, this one, if I, this is just 1 above 19, so this has to be 20 degrees, above that, if I trace it, it is 23 degrees and above that is 24 degrees. So, the last 4 values are 24, 25, 20. 22, 19. Those are the last 5 values. If I order them in an increasing order, what are the values? 19, 20, 22, 23 and 24. What is the median temperature then? The median temperature is 22 degrees C. So, the mean temperature of in the first 5 days is 21 degrees C. The median temperature in the last 5 days is 22 degrees C. So, is the mean temperature less than, greater than or equal to? It is less than the temperature in the last 5 days. So, the correct option to choose is less than. So, if I choose less than, I can say that the mean temperature in the first 5 days is less than the median temperature in the last 5 days. So, the correct answer is less than. Consider the second statement. Between day 7 and day 8, there is a notable increase of dash in temperature alongside a corresponding decrease of dash in percentage points of humidity. So, between day 7 and day 8, what is the values? For temperature, day 7 temperature is how much? It is 20 degrees C. What is the value of temperature on day 8? It is 25 degrees C. So, what is this increase? 5 degrees increase. But they have asked for percentage options. So, we have to ask what is the percentage increase? What is the percentage increase? Initial value is 20 degrees C. Final value is 25 degrees C. So, what is the percentage increase as such? That is final value minus initial value by initial value. So, 25 minus 20 final value minus initial value divided by 20 into 100 percent. So, that this is equal to how much? This is 5 by 20. So, that is 1 by 4 into 100 percent. So, this is 25 percent increase. So, there is a 25 percent increase in temperature from day 7 to day 8. 20 degrees to 25 degrees if it is going from A to B, it is 5 degrees over 20 degrees 1 by 4. So, that is a 25 percent increase from day 7 to day 8. What is the difference? What is the corresponding decrease in percentage points of humidity? See, humidity is already in percent. And we are asked not what is the percentage decrease, we are asked what is the percentage points decrease. What is percentage points decrease? That is basically the absolute change in percentage points. We should not take final value minus initial value divided by initial value. Percentage points means just the absolute difference as such. So, here what was the initial value? Initial value was 82 percent. It went to 82 percent went to 65 percent as such. So, what is the percentage points change? See, when you say what is the percentage change, you should say final value minus initial value upon initial value into 100 percent. But if it is just percentage points, I am asking for the absolute change. So, this is a decrease of 17 percentage points. So, how much was the corresponding decrease? 
this decrease was 17 percentage points. So, that is the right answer to choose. So, as you can see, we have understood what is mean, mean of the first five terms, what is median, median of the last five terms, what is percentage change, we had to do percentage change in change in temperature and what is absolute change, we had to find out the percentage points decrease in humidity. So, all of these we can understand based on the question text that is given. So, this is basically how you have to answer questions on graphics interpretation. Now, let us take a look at the question that we had actually discussed the uh, graph that I had given to you initially. So, consider the frequency weight distribution that is given. The frequency distribution that is given shows the weights of the students that are there in class 12A. There are 75 students and we are asked approximately dash of the students in class 12A have weights above the mean weight of the class. The mean weight of the class is what? It is 66.1 kgs. So, how many people have more than 66.1 kgs as their weight? So, over here let us count, okay. This is 6 people. This is how much? This is 7 people. This is again 6 people. This is uh, 8 people. This is again 6 people. This is 4 people, 4 people and this is 1 person over here. All of these bar represents people whose weight is above 66 kgs as such. 66.1 kgs which is the mean weight. So, out of 75, how many have weight above mean weight? This is 6 plus 7, that is 13, plus 6, that is 19, 27, uh, 33, 37, 41, 42. So, 42 out of 75 have weight which is over uh, 66.1. So, how much is it in percentage terms? That is 42 divided by 75 into 100 percent. This is 25 times 4, this is 25 times 3, this is 14. 14 into 4 that is 56 percent. So, 56 percent of the students have weight which is greater than the mean weight of the class. Consider the second statement. The second statement is average weight of the lowest 25 percent of the class represented by the bottom quartile compri comprising of 18 students is closest to what kilograms. So, let us find out the last 18 students. Where are the last 18 students? These are 3 students. This if I calculate, this is 4 students over here. Over here, number of students would be 5. This is 5. This is 7 plus uh, 5, that is uh, 12 plus 5, that is 17. So, 3 students have 60 kgs, 4 students have uh, 61 kgs, 5 students have 62 kgs, 5 students have 63 kgs. This is a total of 17 people and I need to consider for 18 students. So, from this, uh, for 64 kgs, there are 7 people with 64 kgs. But I have to consider only one of them because that will be the 18th guy as such. The lowest 18 values if I consider, lowest 3 values are 60. Then the 4th uh, to 7th value is 61. The 8th to 12th value is 62. The 13th to eight, uh, 17th value is 63 and the 18th value is 64 as such. So, one person will have weight of 64. Now, I have to find out the average weight of all of these values. So, that will be 3 times 60, 4 times uh, 61, 5 times 62, 5 times uh, 63 and 1 times 64. Let us assume that the assumed mean is say 60. Okay. So, what is the deviation from 60? So, 4 times you will have a deviation of 1. Uh, zero, uh, 3 times you will have a deviation of 0, 4 times you will have a deviation of 1, 5 times you will have a deviation of 2, 5 times you will have a deviation of 3 plus 1 time you will have a deviation of 4. So, this is 4 plus 10 plus 15. So, this is 14 plus 15 plus 4. So, this is 29 plus 4. This is 33 as such. So, this is 33 and this 33 is representing the uh, weight or deviation of 18 students as such. So, 60 is the assumed mean. The total deviation of these 18 students is 33 kilos above this uh, assumed mean of 60. So, this would be act actual mean would be 60 plus 33 kilos divided by these 18 students. So, this would be how much? This is 11 by 6. So, this is uh, 60 plus 11 by 6. So, that is 61 and 5 by 6. So, what is this closest to? This mean is closest to 62 kilos. So, this average of the bottom quartile is closest to 62 kilograms as such. So, over here we have also considered what is the bottom quartile. Bottom quartile is basically the lowest 18 people. We could have easily also considered bottom quartile as basically 0.25 that is 25 percent into 75 and we would have not gotten a round number. That is why they have given us the last 18 number as such so that there is no uh, even if it is decimal, we know exactly we have to consider for 18 students. Then we know that once we know that we have to consider the lowest 18 values, 
the lowest three values are this much, the next four values are this much, the next five values are this much. From that, we get all the lowest 18 values. Their average is what is basically asked. So, this is basically how you calculate when quartile is asked, quintile is asked, etc. Okay. So, this is basically how you solve questions on graphics interpretation. In general, I would basically say that whenever you are solving questions of graphics interpretation, pay close attention to all parts of the graph. So, the uh, a lot of people do not read the chart titles, chart subtitles. This is extremely important. Why? Why is this extremely important? Because clues are often hidden in subtitles, often hidden in uh, titles. Be very careful of the axis uh, units, the x axis units, the y axis units. These often lead to errors in calculation as such. So, the first thing that is Pay close attention to all parts of the graph as such. The second thing that you should do is basically whenever you are solving or completing one particular sentence, whenever a sentence is given and this is the drop down and this is the sentence and this is the drop down, whatever you are comparing, okay. So, whenever one particular value or uh, uh, element is chosen, go and see that value in the graph, write it down. So, first value is say 52 degrees C, third value is say 53 degrees C. If an average is given, write down the entire set of values. So, five values, write them down, find the average out. Whenever you actually write down explicitly the set, it is easier for you to calculate the average. It is easier for you to find the median. So, whenever you are reading uh, any particular statement in graphics interpretation, whatever a value is being referred to, write them down. Once you have written them down, it is easier to calculate. Be careful of percentage changes and absolute changes. When you are asked what is the percentage change, you have to say final value minus initial value divided by initial value into 100%. What is the change in uh, temperature? That refers to absolute uh, this. If it is change in temperature but the options are in percentages, they meant percentage change in temperature. Suppose it is asked what is the change in percentage points? Change in percentage points also means absolute change as such, okay. So, this is basically how you should answer all the questions. See, when you are actually uh, comparing quantities, okay, if you are comparing quantities and you have to say greater than, less than, uh, a quick way to solve would be, generally the quantities are not that close to each other. So, you can use approximations in those cases. You are given a calculator to solve uh, data insights, but I would suggest that as much as possible, do not rely too much on the calculator because these can be time intensive. And if you start relying too much on the calculator, you will get into time trouble. So, because of that, as much as possible, use approximations. And once you use approximations, if the values are not close to each other, you can easily answer questions about greater than, less than, etc. So, use that uh, approximations as much as possible. When the values are close to each other or a lot of division is required, only then go to the calculator. So, these are the basic rules that you have to follow. How to read the graph, what type of questions that are asked and what should be your approach to solving. After this video, we will be taking a look at each of the different types of graphs individually so that we know how to read each type of graph. So, thank you for tuning in.